Most welcome to Historia Spana, History Reconnaissance and World War II canvas, painting a picture of the conflagration. And this time we invite you to a journey through World War II, ten clips to form an image of this worldwide conflict. And please, subscribe to our channel and join us on our continuing historical journey. Jerry is a little bit late tonight. The searchlights are in position. The guns are ready. The People's Army of Volunteers is ready. They are the ones who are really fighting this war. The firemen, the air raid wardens, the ambulance drivers. And there's the wail of the Banshee. as they did in that other comfortable world which came to an end when the invader began to attack the last strongholds of freedom. Not all the services run as they did yesterday, but London manages to get to work on time. Next is the Eastern Front, with Axis armies pushing deep into the Soviet Union. Soldiers marching on warm, dusty summer roads towards Odessa in Ukraine and looking forward to capturing rich deposits of iron ore. And, as in many wars, past and present, believing that the war should be over by Christmas. Then came autumn and muddy, almost impossible roads and casualties in abundance, where every mean available was used to transport the wounded to field hospitals and for evacuation further down the line. The British battle cruiser Hood. Hood remained the largest warship in the world for 20 years after her commissioning, and her prestige was reflected in her nickname, the Mighty Hood. On May 24, 1940, Hood encountered a German cruiser, Prince Eugen, together with a battleship Bismarck in the Denmark Strait between Iceland and Greenland. Prince Eugen scored a first hit on Hood. Then, a salvo from Bismarck hit Hood that led to a devastating magazine explosion that broke her back and made her sink in just a few minutes, leaving only three survivors out of a crew of 1,418 men. Das Oberkommando der Wehrmacht gibt bekannt. Ein im Atlantik operierender deutscher Flottenverband unter Führung des Flottenchefs Admiral Lütjens stieß im Seegebiet um Island auf schwere englische Seestreitkräfte. Das Schlachtschiff Bismarck hat hierbei einen englischen Schlachtkreuzer, wahrscheinlich Hood, Pursuit of the Bismarck. British sea power seeking vengeance on that German battleship which blew up the mighty battlecruiser Hood. The signal comes by wireless. An American-built Catalina seaplane has spotted the fleeing Bismarck and the order is given by Admiral Somerville in charge of operations. Torpedo planes to the attack. They take off from the aircraft carrier Ark Royal, the ship the Germans so often claimed they sank. And those are the warplanes that torpedoed the Bismarck, damaging it, slowing its speed, so the British warships could catch the fugitive giant. Scenes of the battle. The crippled Bismarck fires. Shells fall near a British warship. Shells from the doomed Nazi battleship continue to burst. British gunfire and the camera shakes and the cannon smoke drifts by as broadsides are hurled by the warship aboard which these pictures are made and the Bismarck is doomed. Prisoners, members of the crew of the German battleship which was finally finished off by a torpedo. A hundred odd were saved. They thought their ship unsinkable. But in its first sally out on the ocean, the Bismarck was sunk after less than seven days on the high sea. That sea monster fired its shells in the final action, HMS Rodney.
After the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, Japan rapidly expanded its military might in the Asia Pacific region. They targeted British Malaya, the Philippines, Hong Kong, and the Dutch East Indies. Even Australia and India were threatened. Then the tide turned after the Battle of Midway in June 1942, and now Japan and its home islands was to become a target. First by bomber raids against a crumbling air defense, and finally, with almost no targets left, fighter bombers strafing targets of opportunity. Let there be no mistake, we shall completely destroy Japan's power to make war. It was to spare the Japanese people from utter destruction that the ultimatum of July the 26th was issued at Potsdam. Their leaders promptly rejected that ultimatum. If they do not now accept our terms, they may expect a rain of ruin from the air, the like of which has never been seen on this earth. Now, let's go to Berlin in the summer of 1942. A beautiful summer Sunday lures the Berliners out to enjoy the air and sunshine, says the narrator. These images give a false sense of a nation untouched by the war, just waiting for the final victory. At the theater in Schandanmenmarkt, people are waiting in line for tickets. At the National Gallery there is an art exhibition. Many Berliners also visit the arsenal with the spoils of war from the so far victorious battles. The scenes in color that follows are shot three years later in the Berlin in ruins with soldiers from the Allied powers parading the conquered capital of the collapsed Reich. Berlin has practically ceased to exist. The RAF and the Americans by air and the Russians by land have wiped the place out. Soldiers, sailors and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. But this is the year 1944. Much has happened since the Nazi triumphs of 1940-41. The United Nations have inflicted upon the Germans great defeats in open battle, man to man. Our air offensive has seriously reduced their strength in the air and their capacity to wage war on the ground. Pacific, the American forces pushed west. The strategy, called island hopping, was designed to capture strategic islands held by the Japanese and bypass heavily fortified islands, allowing the Allies to advance towards Japan. A little fast too, if you ask me. Wave off. Hey, you can't cut on a wave off. Look out in the catwalk. That's best to suit men. Firefighters. Corman and flight surgeon all converge on the plane. Flight deck crews must be ready. Danger of fire is ever present in a crash like this. Planes are rearmed immediately to be ready for subsequent launching. All planes left on deck must be in a fully ready condition.
command ship standing offshore. Our message is received. The situation map is checked. The support air director contacts carrier planes circling the target. The flight leader receives his instructions. Iwo Jima is a volcanic island located roughly halfway between the Marianas Islands and the Japanese mainland. It was considered strategically important for the United States as a potential base for supporting long-range B-29 bomber raids against Japan. The capture of Iwo Jima provided the US with crucial airfields that could be used for emergency landings and to support the bombing raids. everything, here was the road to Rome. By June 4th, 1944, American troops were entering Rome. This operation resembled the airborne invasion of Burma this spring, though on a much larger scale. As in Burma, this force was to be landed behind the enemy line and would be required to maintain itself for some time. Trained to a hair, the tough fighters of the Anglo-American Airborne Army were in action in a matter of seconds after landing. Their first task was to neutralize immediate enemy resistance and clear the way for the gliders to land without enemy interference. Arrived on time, the gliders were soon discharging their cargoes of fighting men, tanks, guns and supplies to reinforce the paratroops. The Airborne Army had failed in their immediate objective, but they'd succeeded in drawing against themselves several German Army divisions. That's all folks, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe.